Everyone is fascinated by North Korea, and even though not many non-North Koreans would really want to live there, you can't help but admire this angry little country that flat out refuses to open a goddamn Starbucks on every street like everyone else. Instead of processed sugary coffee, they have a strong sense of national unity. And instead of Burger King, they have nukes. From the difficulty escaping this unique nation to the family who runs the show, here's 20 insane things about North Korea you didn't know. Number 20. It is so hard to escape from North Korea. Kim Yong-shil was the first to arrive in 2006. Then there was her husband, her two adult children, and her adolescent son. Her mother appeared two years later, followed by one brother and then the other in 2012. Over the last decade, members of this family have departed North Korea one by one, the ones who made it out first earning money and meeting brokers to get the others out. Because security along the border has tightened drastically since Kim Jong-un assumed leadership of the country, his technique, known as chain defection, is now practically the only option to get out of North Korea. If you don't have family living outside North Korea, it's impossible to get out because someone has to pay," said Jung kwang il a defector who works as a human rights activist in South Korea. This is why North Korea is the hardest country to escape. Over the last two decades, 29,000 North Koreans have crossed the river that defines the country's border with China to flee famine and tyranny at home. The number of refugees had been gradually increasing until Kim's first year in office when it began to decline. Fewer than 1,300 individuals have fled by the end of last year, less than half of the high recorded in 2009. Families in the South scrape together their scant earnings to attempt to locate relatives. Defectors in the South who work as brokers, merchants on the North Korean-China border who transport money back and forth, and soldiers in North Korea who may be bought to guide would-be defectors where and when to cross are all part of a well-established procedure. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. The same family has ruled North Korea since it was founded. The Kim family, sometimes referred to as the Mount Piktu bloodline in the Workers' Party of Korea's ideological discourse, is a three-generation lineage of North Korean leadership descended from the country's founding leader, Kim Il-sung. After the end of Japanese mandate in 1945, Kim Il-sung was elected to lead the North in 1948. In a futile attempt to reunify the Korean peninsula, Kim started the Korean War in 1950. Kim Il-sung built a cult of personality in the 1980s that was intimately linked to the Juche Doctrine of North Korea. Kim Il-sung's cult of personality was handed down to his son, Kim Jong-il, and then to his grandson, Kim Jong-un. After his death in 1994, in the 1930s, Kim Il-sung rebelled against Japan's hegemony over Korea, leading to his exile in the Soviet Union. Following Japan's defeat in World War II, Korea was partitioned. In 1948, Kim became the first premier of North Korea's new government, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, commonly known as North Korea, after leading the Interim People's Committee of North Korea, a Soviet-packed professional government. In an attempt to reunify the peninsula, the North Korean KPA crossed the 38th parallel on June 25th, 1950, igniting the Korean War, which was concluded in a stalemate in 1953. Number 18. North Korea has its own calendar. 
Kim Il-sung, the DPRK's founder, was born on the first day of the Juche calendar. In the Juche calendar, his birth year, 1912, in the Gregorian calendar, became Juche first in 1997. Three years after Kim Il-sung's death, the calendar was approved. The calendar incorporates aspects from two ancient calendars, the traditional Korean-era naming system, and the Gregorian calendar, which is based on the traditional birth of Jesus. The Juche calendar, in contrast to these two, begins with the birth of Kim Il-sung, the founder of the Democratic People's Republic. On the third anniversary of Kim Il-sung's death, July 8, 1997, a proclamation establishing the Juche calendar was issued. The Day of the Sun was also declared on Kim Il-sung's birthday by the same proclamation. Kim Il-sung's birth year, 1912, in the Gregorian calendar, was changed to Juche first in the North Korean calendar. Thus, this year, 2022, is Juche 111, the following year will be Juche 112, and so on. On September 9, 1997, the Republic's Foundation Day, the calendar was put into effect. Newspapers, news agencies, radio stations, public transportation, and birth documents all began using Juche years on that date. Number 17. North Korea claims a 100% literacy rate. North Korea requires and provides free basic and secondary education. Children must complete one year of kindergarten. From the ages of six to nine, students attend primary school, often known as people's schools. Following that, kids attend a secondary school that is tailored to their interests. From the ages of 10 to 16, students attend secondary school. North Korea is one of the world's most literate countries. North Korea has a literacy rate of 98 to 100 percent, according to UNESCO. However, given the exaggerated figures coming out of North Korea, a self-reported figure like this is suspect. North Korean pupils are required to read literature. The majority of writers stay anonymous, and their biographical information is kept hidden. The Kim stories are mainly about sustaining socialism and the attention they have given to the literary world. For example, Lim Hua, the one's fifth photograph, is recounted from the perspective of a lady who travels to post-Soviet Russia in the early 1990s, only to see a country that has succumbed to Western influence. One of the most advanced areas of North Korean education is women's education. Both men and women have equal access to secondary education and beyond. The government launched the Chalima campaign in the late 1950s, which aimed to better mobilize the public. As a result, women were taught that freedom comes via labor, socialized child rearing, and productive employment in the construction of a communist North Korea. Women make up more than 80% of primary school teachers and 15% of college professors. Number 16. North Korea has the fourth largest army in the world. North Korea's military force and the armed branch of the Workers' Party of Korea is the Korean People's Army. It is the primary institution of North Korean society under the Shogun policy. Kim Jong-un is the supreme commander of the North Korean military and the chairman of the Central Military Commission. The ground force, naval force, air and anti-air force, strategic rocket forces, and special operation force are the five branches of the KPA. The Republic of Korea Armed Forces and United States Forces Korea are the KPA's major rivals across the Korean demilitarized zone, as they have been since the Armistice Agreement of July 1953. It's the world's second biggest military organization, with 30.4% of the North Korean people serving actively in reserve or in a paramilitary role as of 2021. Before the Korean War began, 
Joseph Stalin sent the Korean People's Army with modern tanks, vehicles, artillery, and small weapons. At the time, the South Korean Army had nothing remotely comparable either in numbers of troops or equipment. The KPA swiftly drove South Korean forces south and occupied Seoul during the early stages of the Korean War in 1950, only to lose 70,000 of their 100,000 strong army in the autumn following U.S. amphibious assaults at the Battle of Incheon and a subsequent drive to the Yalu River. Number 15. Pyongyang's Metro Doubles as a Nuclear Bunker Pyongyang's metro system is now available to tourists for the first time. Chandeliers, memorial plaques, and intricate paintings may all be seen in the photos taken inside. It is difficult to get to Pyongyang, North Korea. However, excursions are now available in a new portion of the city. It's also a sector that's impeccably clean, zealously patriotic, and immaculately dressed. Outsiders were only permitted inside two of Pyongyang's 17 subway stations for years, spawning rumors that the entire system was a setup with costumed actors acting as passengers. But just as Australian travel writer and software developer Elliot Davies arrived in North Korea for his government-sanctioned trip last October, Pyongyang opened its whole metro system to foreigners for the first time. Pretty much a broad museum of North Korea, and all of its ideals, he said of what he discovered, I wasn't expecting it to be so spotless. I hate to say it, but that was most likely the most beautiful subway system I've ever seen. Commuters are accompanied by a soundtrack of national hymns played through vintage loudspeakers as they drop 316 feet below the city's prime business center. They pass through heavy steel doors that may be used to shelters in the case of a nuclear event. Each station has a mix of gilded statues of Kim Il-sung, intricate mosaic murals, bronze plaques honoring North Korean military successes, and fanciful chandeliers dangling from the ceilings. Number 14. North and South Korea have been at war since 1950. The Korean War lasted from June 25th, 1950 to July 27, 1953, and was fought between North and South Korea. Following border conflicts and rebellions in South Korea, North Korea invaded South Korea on June 25, 1950, and the war started. China and the Soviet Union backed North Korea, while the United Nations, namely the United States, backed South Korea. On July 27, 1953, the conflict came to a conclusion with an armistice. However, no peace treaty was ever signed, and the two Koreas are still, formally at war, locked in a stalemate. North and South Korean officials met in the DMZ in April 2018 and agreed to work toward a treaty that would formally end the Korean War, with over 3 million military casualties and a higher relative civilian death toll than World War II or the Vietnam War. The Korean War was one of the most devastating conflicts of the modern period. It resulted in the devastation of almost all of Korea's main cities, as well as thousands of killings on both sides, including the mass slaughter of tens of thousands of suspected communists by the South Korean government and the torture and starvation of South Korean prisoners of war. North Korea became one of the world's most severely bombarded countries. Several million North Koreans are also thought to have fled the country throughout the conflict. Number 13. Pyongyang Stadium is the second largest in the world. The Rungrado 1st of May Stadium is a multi-purpose stadium on Rungra Island in Pyongyang, North Korea, and spans 20.7 hectares. It initially opened on May 1, 1989, with the 13th World Festival of Youth and Students as its first major event. According to the re-estimated number of seats in 2014, it is the world's second biggest stadium by seating capacity, after India's Narendra Modi Stadium and the world's largest stadium by official seating capacity. 
The stadium is currently utilized for football matches, a few athletics events, and the Arirang Festival's mass sports. After Seoul was granted the 1988 Summer Olympics, North Korea stepped up its attempts to portray itself as the genuine Korean state. It won the bid to host the 13th World Festival of Youth and Students in Pyongyang in 1989 as part of these efforts. Massive building projects, including the Rungrado First of May Stadium, were started in preparation for the event. It was the largest stadium ever built in Asia at the time of its completion. While the stadium hosts athletic events, it is also home to large-scale performances and exhibitions honoring President Kim Il-sung and the North Korean country. Number 12. Only one art studio in North Korea is allowed to produce artwork of the country's leaders. The Mansude Art Studio is a North Korean art studio located in Pyeongchang District, Pyongyang. It was created in 1959 and now occupies an area of over 120,000 square meters, making it one of the world's largest art production hubs. Around 4,000 individuals work at the facility, with 1,000 of them being artists selected from North Korea's premier academies. Pyongyang University alumni make up the majority of its artists. The workshop is divided into 13 sections, including sections for woodcuts, charcoal drawings, pottery embroideries, and gem paints among others. Many of North Korea's most prominent monuments, including the monument to the founding of the Korean Workers' Party, the Cholima Statue, and the Mansu Hill Grand Monument, were designed by the studio. The Mansude Overseas Project Group of Companies, which has constructed monuments for 18 African and Asian countries as of 2014, is the company's abroad business section. The Mansude Art Studio is responsible for all of the Kim family's photographs. Kim Jong-il was the director of the Mansude Art Studio until his death. The studio has also had its own facility in Beijing, China's 798 Art District, known as the Mansude Art Museum, since 2009. Number 11. North Korea's Leaders Live Lavish Lives Karl Marx's image of a worker's paradise didn't include private islands, a series of palaces, or a personal harem of thousands of women, but it is precisely what Kim Jong-un spends his billions on while his people live in poverty. Before denuclearization discussions can continue, the despot is said to have asked that the U.S. relax bans on importing high-class wine and fancy suits. Kim's appeal comes as his secluded country struggles with a severe food scarcity caused by storms and the pandemic. The need for luxury was not just for Kim Jong-un's own consumption, but to distribute to Pyongyang's elite. According to Park jae won the chief of South Korea's National Intelligence Service, since becoming supreme leader of North Korea in 2011, Kim's penchant for the best things in life has become famous. Kim, according to the International Business Times, owns 17 luxurious mansions in North Korea, as well as a fleet of 100 largely European luxury automobiles, a private plane, and a 100-foot boat. According to Business Insider, since Kim Jong-un took power, there have been signs of a rise in luxury goods creeping out of North Korea since Kim Jong-un took over, and his wife, Ri sol Ju, was photographed holding what appeared to be an expensive Dior handbag worth almost $1,594, an average year's salary in North Korea. Kim Jong-un likes to drink and party all night like his father and ordered imported sauna equipment to help him beat hangovers and fatigue, diplomatic sources said. Number 10. There are just four TV channels in North Korea. North Korean television is regulated by the Korean Central Broadcasting Committee and overseen by the Workers' Party of Korea's Propaganda and Agitation Department. According to a 2017 research, 98% of homes possessed a television to prevent them from picking up transmissions from South Korea, which uses NTSC System M Analog and ATSC Digital, or China, television sets sold in North Korea can only work on the P. AL 
and DVB-T2 systems, which use DTMB Digital. However, because Russian broadcasts are also DVB-T2, they may be picked up. Imported television sets that can work in both PAL and NTSC, such as those from Japan, have their NTSC capabilities blocked by the government at the point of import. North Korea has four television channels as of August 16, 2016. All of them are state-owned and run from daylight to primetime. Over time, the quality of programming has improved, international news is transmitted, and educational programming is of excellent quality. Documentaries are often broadcast and generally focus on health, Korean and global history and geography. Athletic Television is a sports station that debuted on August 15, 2015. It broadcasts sporting events involving North Korean athletes, as well as documentaries and shows about the history of sports in North Korea and throughout the world. Number 9. Power Cuts Are a Common Problem in North Korea Regular homes usually receive only two hours of electricity per day due to North Korean authorities prioritizing the armament sector for electricity. While North Korea, which is primarily reliant on hydroelectric power, typically produces less energy in the winter than in the summer, the supply constraint this year appears to be more severe than usual. North Korea's electrical shortages have been a long-standing issue for the country. Nonetheless, inequity in power distribution has gotten worse in recent years. North Korea is reliant on hydropower, which causes shortages during the winter months when rain fall is scarce, and rivers are clogged by ice. North Korea is a net exporter of energy. In 2009, North Korea consumed 224 terawatt-hours of primary energy and 9 terawatt-hours per million inhabitants. After Kim Jong-il pursued plans that saw the development of major hydroelectric power facilities around the nation, coal and hydro are the country's principal sources of power. Only 26% of North Korea's population has access to electricity, according to the 2019 CIA World Factbook. Due to the priority given to manufacturing enterprises, many homes are limited to only two hours of power every day. North Korea gets crude oil from Dandong, China through an old pipeline. The government had previously been allowed to buy oil at below market costs from China and the Soviet Union, but with the end of the Cold War, these agreements were not maintained, resulting in an enormous surge in oil prices for Pyongyang. Number 8. Rollerblading Never Went Out of Fashion in Pyongyang while most countries lost interest in rollerblading in the 2000s, North Korea appears to be an exception. Shortly after gaining power in 2011, Kim Jong-un brought the sport to Korea on a huge basis. Pyongyang Skate Park is North Korea's first skate park. It was built as part of the Ryugyong Health Complex and inaugurated in November 2012. Half pipes, ramps, grind rails, and a track are all part of the skate park. In November 2012, Kim Jong-un, chairman of the Workers' Party of Korea of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, paid a visit to the Pyongyang Skate Park, where he stated, In order to develop sports, it is necessary to steadily seek means and methods suited to the actual conditions of the country, on the basis of thorough preparations, and develop sports science and put it on a high level underscoring the need to take measures for the supply of physical exercise apparatuses. In 2018, the Pyongyang Skate Park launched a Dam Am skateboarding tournament, Dam Am North Korea. It's unknown how strong North Korea's skateboarding culture is. North Koreans are more into incline skating, according to Alejandro Sao de Benos de Lesi Perezis, special delegate for the Committee for Cultural Relations with Foreign Countries, a hint at how this skate park may be used. Number 7. Elections with only one candidate to choose from North Koreans recently voted in the second election since Kim Jong-un assumed power to pick the country's rubber-stamped parliament. 
the Supreme People's Assembly election is compulsory, and there is no choice of candidates. Dissension of any type is unheard of, the turnout is almost always near 100%, and the ruling alliance receives unequivocal support, because they're the only ones allowed to run for office. The Kim family dynasty rules North Korea, which is an isolated country. Citizens are expected to devote their entire lives to the family and its present leader, so how does it function? On election day, everyone who is 17 years old or older is required to vote. As a sign of loyalty, you're expected to turn up early. That means there'll likely be long queues, says Fyodor Tertitsky, a North Korean expert based in Seoul, South Korea. When it's your time, you'll get a ballot with only one name on it. There are no forms to complete or boxes to check. You take that piece of paper and place it in the open air ballot box, and that's how democracy works, folks. Number 6. A Propaganda Village, Kijongdong Kijongdong is an alleged village in South Korea. It is localized in the Korean demilitarized zone's northern portion. Outside of North Korea, it has been dubbed Propaganda Village, particularly among South Koreans and Western media. Kijongdong is one of two settlements allowed to stay in the four-kilometer-wide DMZ established as part of the Korean War ceasefire in 1953. The town is said to have a 200-family communal farm, as as well as a childcare center, kindergarten, primary and secondary schools, and a hospital, according to the North Korean authorities. The South, on the other hand, proclaims the town is an abandoned settlement erected in the 1950s as part of a propaganda campaign to promote South Korean defection and to house DPRK soldiers guarding the border zone's network of artillery positions, fortifications, and underground marshalling bunkers, a number of brilliantly painted, poured concrete multi-story structures, and apartments dot the hamlet, many of which appear to be wired for power. When viewed from across the the border, the vivid blue roofs, and white sides of the houses next to the big DPRK flag would be the most distinctive elements. However, examination with modern telescopic lenses has revealed that the structures are concrete shells, with no windows, glass, or even inner rooms, with building lights switched on and off, at predetermined intervals, and empty walkways cleaned by caretakers to maintain the sense of bustle. The DPRK transmits propaganda to the the South using massive loudspeakers erected on numerous of the structures. Number 5. Preserved the Dead Body of Kim Jong-il North Korea has stated that the late leader Kim Jong Remain's eels will be kept in state at a palace in Pyongyang for the rest of eternity. His remains will be laid to rest alongside his father Kim Il Sung at the Kumsusan Memorial Palace. According to official media, monument towers will be built for him, and his birthday, February 16th, will be commemorated as Day of the Shining Star. Kim Jong Il, who was 69 years old at the time of death, died of a heart attack on December 17th, 2012. Before his extravagant burial on December 28th, his body was shown in the palace. The decision to keep Kim Jong-il's body was taken to demonstrate the party's unanimous desire and ardent request to hold him in high regard as the eternal leader of the party, according to the KCNA report. Before becoming transformed into a mausoleum following his death, the Kumsusan Memorial Palace was the house of eternal president Kim Il-sung, the shining star is a assumed to be a reference to missiles manufactured by North Korea as part of Mr. Kim's military first program. Number 4. North Korea has their own rules for basketball. While Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un argue over issues such as nuclear weapons and who has the larger red button, the North Korean supreme leader does have one authority that the president lacks, the ability to modify basketball regulations. The NBA and the rest of the country would undoubtedly laugh in Trump's face if he tried to issue a decree declaring that all slam dunks are now worth three points. However, no one in North Korea is likely to have laughed when 
when that regulation was implemented. According to the San Diego Union Tribune in Australia, basketball players in the dictatorship obey a set of regulations that aren't observed anyplace else, and Redditors say that they make the game more dramatically interesting. The restrictions are unclear as to when they went into force, but they appear to be the work of Kim Jong father Hun's Kim Jong il. Chinese media revealed the alternative scoring system in October 2006, while Kim Jong il was still alive and in control, according to the Union Tribune. Kim Jong un, on the other hand, is a self professed basketball aficionado and great friend of NBA legend Dennis Rodman, and his effect on the new regulations is unclear. Number 3. North Korea is full of natural beauty. Hills and mountains dominate the landscape, which are divided by deep, narrow valleys. In the west, the coastal plains are broad, whereas in the east, they are sparse. Because of the many consecutive mountain ranges that crisscross the peninsula, early European travelers to Korea commented that the land resembled a sea in a heavy gale. Mountains and uplands make up around 80% of North Korea's geographical area, with North Korea home to all of the peninsula's mountains, with heights of 2,000 meters or higher. The plains and lowlands are home to the vast bulk of the inhabitants. Paektu Mountain, North Korea's highest peak at 2,743 meters above sea level, is a volcanic mountain in Manchuria with a basalt lava plateau with heights ranging from 1,400 to 2,000 meters above sea level. The Hamgyong Range, at the far northeastern corner of the peninsula, includes a number of high peaks, notably Kwanmobong, which stands at 2,541 meters. The Rongrim Mountains, located in North Korea's north-central region and running north-south, make connectivity between the country's eastern and western regions problematic, and the Gangnam Range, which runs along the North Korea-China border, are two other prominent ranges, the beautiful grandeur of Kumgangsa, or Diamond Mountain, about 1,638 meters, in the Thaebaek range, which extends to South Korea, is legendary. Number 2. North Korea actually has its own space program. North Korea's space program began in the 1980s with the goal of deploying communications, Earth observation, and weather observation satellites. On April 1, 2013, the National Aerospace Development Administration NADA, North Korea's official space agency, was established succeeding the Korean Committee of Space Technology. The Law on Space Development is the present foundation for NADA's activity. The law establishes North North Korean guidelines for the peaceful development of operations in space and ensures adherence to Juche ideological principles. The space development law strives to address scientific and technological issues, cooperation with international organizations, and other nations is encouraged, as is adherence to public international law, space law, and international norms. Number 1. North Korea introduces mandatory military service for women. High school graduates are compelled to serve in the military until they reach the age of 23. North Korea is making military duty mandatory for young women in an effort to boost the country's armed forces, according to Daily NK sources. The policy, which is supposed to apply to women aged 17 to 20, has been sent to mobilization offices in every province, city, and country. According to reports, implementation is already started. We received orders late last year for all women who graduated from middle and high school to serve in the military, a source from North Hamkyung province told Daily NK. A preliminary screening and physicals for the April enlistment have been completed, and duty sectors have been organized, the source stated. Physical abnormalities and infectious infections are detected during screenings. According to the source, the minimum height requirement for women to serve was dropped to 142 centimeters in 2012, however this criterion is not properly followed. Would you like to live in North Korea? What's your favorite North Korea fact? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!